Now, this could just be me, but I feel like new coffee drippers are a dime a dozen, but one that actually innovates or improves upon a design seems to be pretty rare. The Pure Over isn't the first to bring paperless brewing to the table, but its uniquely designed perforated glass dripper provides a front row seat to the brewing experience. Plus, it takes advantage of the growing popularity of no bypass drippers that aim to give the barista a higher level of control and consistency without unknown amounts of fresh water slipping past the filter during the brewing process. But as you likely already guessed, this unique design has its own benefits and challenges. And that, of course, is where I come in. So in this video, I'll be going over the pure over from top to bottom, covering what I like, what I don't, and where I think this falls in the ever-expanding manual coffee brewer market. So to start, I want to go over what I like about the pure over. For one, using their brew recipe is extremely simple. Add 20 grams of medium ground coffee, flatten out the bed, bloom it for 20 seconds, add the remaining water all the way up to the handle, and then wait for the drawdown. Also, the build quality is really nice, and I know that a lot of baristas are kind of weary of glass, and believe me, I've had my own ups and downs. But this glass looks and feels pretty substantial, especially in comparison to others I've owned, which gives me a little more peace of mind. Within that same vein, or somewhere within the topic of build quality, I do have to say I think it's a really great looking piece of coffee gear. And I'm a huge fan of clear equipment, because watching the grinds bloom, float, and then sink into the bed, is like a coffee lava lamp, and I'm here for it. After quite a few years of hand brewing experience and a plethora of dripper options at my disposal, I have to say that the pure over is probably one of the most difficult ones to dial in and brew consistently. From one to another on the same coffee, grind, and recipe, I had a relatively wide variety of outcomes. Using their recommended brew recipe, the only form of consistency I could get was a relatively weak cup with an extraction yield in the low to mid teens. Also, some of the design choices create this snowballing of extraction issues that are pretty difficult to combat using traditional methods. Because of its perforated filter, there will always be some grind slipping through, and a coarser grind will produce a cleaner cup with less sediment but the extraction will likely suffer the consequences, creating a light and potentially sour brew. Switching things up and going with a finer grind will also result in more grinds slipping through the filter, but an even higher likelihood of choking the drawdown to a mere trickle, resulting in the high probability of a seven plus minute extraction and the likelihood of over extraction causing bitterness and astringency. When I tried to split the difference and increase the extraction on the recommended medium grind size, the use of agitation resulted in more grinds slipping through into the carafe. Plus, the agitation in the form of stirring or swirling seems to speed up fine migration, quickly choking or clogging the dripper. Another design choice that I feel like resulted in the dripper's overall inconsistency and brewing difficulties is the tapered sides of the dripper. This, combined with the shower head attachment, means water doesn't evenly saturate the coffee bed and is more or less focused on the center. Because of this, during the bloom phase, you need to add quite a bit of water, since it needs to build up and flow over to the edges. And even when it does, it's also prone to dry spots that you can see in the bed through the glass sides. Every dripper I've used prior produces consistent pressure downwards, either by the ever popular cone shape or straight walls leading to the filter portion. But on the pure over, instead of the entire force of the water sitting on the coffee and filtering its way through, a portion of it sits along the horizontal sides, which essentially creates an obstructed or at the very least an unusual flow through the bed of coffee. And on top of that, the glass filter itself is prone to clogging. With roughly 60 perforations, it doesn't take much to slow the flow to a single drip and produce a bitter and astringent cup of coffee. Lastly, those tapered sides and lack of paper filter also results in a pretty messy cleanup. Instead of being able to pull out the grinds or drop the entire puck in one tap, the pure over tends to drop out the center, but requires some shaking, tapping, and rinsing to get things cleaned up along the sides.
In the end, I think the pure over suffers from an all too common issue in the coffee industry, and that is a focus on form over function. After roughly 20 brews during the course of a few weeks, I think an average of maybe 1 in 10 were actually in the sweet spot which in my mind tend to fall in this little pocket between a pour over and a French press. And sure, that's a nice cup, a pleasant balance of body and clarity. But with so few brews actually being successful during my testing, I found myself wanting to always reach for a different dripper, which isn't a good sign. I even went so far as to ask a few other owners about their experience with the pour over to see if we shared any similar difficulties. On one hand, I was relieved to hear that they had, but also a little bummed out that no one has been able to really nail this thing down, which to me reinforces that there is some fundamental design flaws that leads to these broad difficulties and lack of consistency. So I think it's pretty clear I'm not a fan of the pure over and it's not really gonna get my recommendation. I take no joy in producing reviews like this, but when my reputation hinges on honesty, this just is what it has to be. I guess all I can really hope for is that the folks at Pureover don't take this personally and take it more as constructive criticism and maybe update their design or make some changes to make it more appealing to the broader coffee community and myself included. But also, I hope that those who are in the market for maybe a new dripper skip this one, at least for now, and avoid the potential frustration that I had when brewing with it. And with all that said, I think it's time I wrap this one up and pass the conversation on to you. So if you're a pure over owner, I would actually love to hear your thoughts on it. What's your experience been like? Good, bad, neutral? And because I don't do a lot of filter coffee videos on this channel, what are your recommendations for future filter coffee videos and drippers you'd like to see? Drop your answers to those and any other questions you may have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spromethius for content throughout the week, my blog at Spromethius.com, my coffee at littlegiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy.